Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. I can't imagine what you're applauding. Uh, Mr. Starbuck's introduction or the uh, physical presentation of me before you. If I were you, I would reserve my applause until the end and then withhold it. Now, the program for this evening is extremely simple. Can you all hear me? Not? But then I'll speak louder. I can speak as loudly as possible. But some of the poems that I am going to read you are not meant to be spoken that loudly. I don't care whether I'm heard or not, but on the whole, I would prefer to be heard. You see that. Even the least ingenuous among you must see that. I will not read, but bellow to you. I'm referring to my close friend, Saul Bellow, the only other man with one exception in the United States who can write a decent sentence, in my opinion. There are only three of them. And one is having difficulty with the marriage, and the other has other difficulties. And I have many difficulties. Uh, I'm assuming uh, that you can hear me. Uh, this is not a cultural occasion, ladies and gentlemen, in case you were misled by anyone. This is an entertainment. If at any, body, at any time anybody is bored, let him get up and leave. We're all free agents, all except Mr. Johnson. Uh, the poem is called The Dream Songs. The first volume was published two years ago, called 77 Dream Songs. And the second volume, which is called His Toy, His Dream, His Rest, um, 307 dream songs, some incredible number, is, is scheduled for March or April in New York and London. It's about a man named Henry, an imaginary character, a white American in blackface, namely a minstrel. Uh, in early middle age, who has suffered an irreversible loss and uh, enjoys many other difficulties. So, the cast of characters is large, uh, but the most important one is an interlocutor of Henry who calls him Mr. Bones. The interlocutor is never named. I know his name, but the critics haven't found out yet. <laughs> we must leave something for the professors to do, don't you think so? How otherwise can an assistant professor become an associate professor? Uh, his unnamed friend calls him Mr. Bones, or variant on that title. 
rigid first one, and then several in between, and then some even more in between, <laughs> then we have from book four, and then the, uh, the final song. You understand that in the course of an hour, it's impossible to give you much impression of a poem of almost 400 pages. Uh, but and I'm not going to try to do that. You'll have to take these songs, as it were, on their own. I will say, though, that in the first song, the personality of the poet... Uh, diminishes itself into the personality of Henry. And that in the last song, the personality of Henry diminishes itself into the personality of the poem. Otherwise, the poem, in spite of its large cast of characters, is entirely about a man named Henry. Not me. Well, the first one, number one of book one, goes. Huffy Henry hid the day. Unappeasable Henry sulked. I see his point of trying to put things over. It was the thought that they thought they could do it made Henry wicked and away. But he should have come out and talked. All the world, like a woolen lover, once did seem on Henry's side. Then came a departure. Of uh, thereafter, nothing fell out as it might or ought. I don't see how Henry, pride open for all the world to see, survived. What he has now to say is a long wonder the world can bear and be. Once in a sycamore I was glad all at the top and I sang. Hard on the land, where's the strong sea? And empty grows every bed. 